Well, this is the beautiful hibiscus flower, most often seen in tropical countries all around the world. But it might surprise you to know that this particular one is right here in London. I'm Robin Dwyer and I'm in Kew Gardens, which is 132 acres, roughly 53,000 square metres of plants, all helping save our biodiversity and keep these wonderful plants for generations to come. So I'm here in the Palm House in Kew Gardens and that's designed to mimic a rainforest environment. So it's always above 18 degrees centigrade because the plants that live here need to be warm and wet. As you can probably hear, there's uh, some lot of watering going on here to keep these jungle style plants well watered. So there's many things that you can see, uh, hundreds, 10,000 I think, uh, specimens of plant here. Uh, they're ranging from uh, things like the ancient cycads, which preceded the dinosaurs. And then in this section here, I don't know if you can see, there is uh, some edible plants. There's a cacao plant here. That obviously goes to make chocolate. We have a vanilla plant up here. And round the corner, we have more edible plants that you might recognize. There is a uh, papaya plant. I'm gonna see if I can take a shot of that right up high. I'm pretty small, so you might not see it above my shoulder, but I will uh, find it. There it is, right behind me, up there. And there are also uh, banana plants. We've got bamboo in here. And it's a fantastic repository of many, many plant species, all helping conserve the biodiversity of our planet. This beautiful pink flower is called the Madagascar periwinkle. It's native to Madagascar. And they found out that it can be used to make drugs that can help treat cancer. Well, this bamboo can grow up to 25 meters in the wild, but uh, not in this greenhouse. So we are here in another wonderful space in Kew Gardens. This is the temperate house. Everything in here has to be kept above 10 degrees centigrade and everything that lives in here would naturally live in the wild in places that are not too hot, not too cold, not too dry and not too wet. So there are around 1500 species in here of all kinds, lots of palms, ferns and beautiful flowers. So we are here with Ema Niklua, who is a research leader in conservation here at Kew. Ema, what is biodiversity? It's a bit of a basic question, but what does it really mean? Biodiversity means the, the sum of all living things, and we tend to talk about it at different levels. So we think about ecosystems, species, and genetic diversity as the three main components of biodiversity. And why is it at risk? What are the biggest risks to our biodiversity? The biggest risks to our biodiversity right now um, are uh, habitat loss, so loss of our natural ecosystems and vegetation and coming fast up climate change. So while climate change is slightly in the future in terms of its peak risk, it's the evidence of climate change affecting biodiversity is already with us. So the leaves on this plant look very much like a banana and this one is known as a false banana because it's not actually the yellow fruit that's eaten, it's the base and the underground part. It's a very important food crop in southern Ethiopia and they're hoping to do some research on it and make it a valid source of food for the larger African continent. So Q's trying to help, what's yeah. Q doing? We're trying to help um, at the level of making sure that the decisions that are made about what to do about biodiversity are based on strong science. Uh, so that's the sort of the basics of Q. But then increasingly, we're also trying to do the, the influencing around all that. So Q has a, a very wide spectrum of operation. So education and conservation together. So it's really important then to find these plants mm -hmm. and if they're at risk, mm -hmm. But become aware of that and put them on what put them we, on the red list. What does that yeah. mean? What happens then? Okay, so if if we make an evaluation, um, we put put the plant on the red list. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's threatened. Everything that we evaluate properly gets on the red list. But the threatened part of the red list um, has plants that are vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered. And Q's working in cooperation with China in some ways. Yes, in, in numerous ways, but um, specifically of relevance, um, I guess you'll be at the COP perhaps in Kunming, and uh, Q has a partnership with the seed bank there. 
Now we should be looking at a plant here, but unfortunately there's only an empty pot. It's a memorial, if you like, to the St Helena olive, a plant which Q tried its hardest to save, but actually sadly went extinct in 2003. But they did manage to save its DNA, which they're going to use for research. And maybe one day, if conditions are right, bring it back. So we've come outside now in Kew Gardens and we're in the Mediterranean garden, which has been designed to mimic the kind of plants and flowers you would see in parts of southern Europe. So Italy, France, Spain, Greece and so on. The weather today is a bit like that here, although it isn't usually in London. So the kind of things we're looking at are, I've seen some lavender, there's some sweet smelling rosemary, lots of beautiful flowers and things like olive trees, which give a real Mediterranean vibe. Well, I've only been able to show you just a fraction of the things there are to see here at Kew Gardens in London. It really is no wonder it's one of the UK's top tourist attractions, but it is just so much more than that. It has a really important role in helping keep our biodiversity for the future.